want to talk to you about um, something that is not, not, not a topic that I expected to be talking about when I started this channel, when I started making recordings to, to start a channel on on um, emotional abuse and narcissism and you know the narcissism e narcissism epidemic and and um, my sociopathic first husband and all I did not expect to be doing a video on grief and on um, and on uh, the death of a child I did not um, however I can say that I had already known my fair share of grief, more than my fair share of grief, and so had my sons. You know, it was as though all at once, you know, I, I often have thought about it, about how this happened in 2001, it started happening in 2001, it took, it took, took the course over a couple of years, but by 2000, and, uh, by the time my divorce was, uh, happened in 2005, um, you know, 2001 to 2005, it was clearing out of everybody. Uh, you know, I've often thought about what, what, how it would have been different if, you know, I had been um, left with just the kids and all the rest of the family had been in those airplanes in, in 2001, the 9-11 airplanes. How would our life have been different? And I'm probably going to get all kinds of comments about this, but I have to tell you our lives would have been infinitely better uh, my, my sons would have been infinitely better off it's um, it's 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 a lack of empathy it's a low empathy that happens and and, and you know people that are sociopathic are very uh, you know the, the sad thing is is that they have such an insight they have such a, a sensitivity to other people's wants, other people's desires, and how to affect change, how to affect behavior. And it's just used in such a negative way. It's self-centered, destructive way. Whereas if, it, if that same energy was used in an, an other-centered, constructive, creative way, oh my gosh, it would just be amazing. My ex-husband is, um, he, he has this fine line between, you know, someone who could really, um, make things happen and and you know life of the party he could make people feel good he was you know um popular he also knew the flip side he knew how to destroy someone something he thought about a lot I, I i realize now i didn't really realize it until you know i saw it all in action but he thought a lot about um who's liked and who's in and who's out and and you know hierarchies and how you you know alliances and all of that I never thought about that stuff I never did I was not ever strategically thinking about my relationships ever I was always just thinking about um, not even thinking it was I was going on feeling and I was purely motivated by um, love like wanting to experience love wanting to give and receive love connection human connection wanting to be known and wanting to be wanting to be wanting to matter to people and wanting to make a difference to people that was what was motivating me and um, and like all people I tended to see myself in others and in his case I saw myself where it didn't exist at all got involved was either narcissistic or apathetic meaning they didn't have adequate empathy they didn't have, they weren't um, conscientious enough to really care enough about getting answers so that things made sense. So they kind of, were able, they were able to just sort of turn the other, to turn away and let things happen. Even when, you know, um, there were explanations offered, but they were half-baked explanations. If you followed them very far, you couldn't have followed them very far at all before they would start to fall apart. You know, my son isn't the first person even to die in this situation because, you know, it all was kind of kicked off by the fact that I literally died of a broken heart in 2001. And, um, and when I was in, in the experience of the near-death experience, what brought me back was that I saw my children after I was gone. 
And up until that point, I didn't even realize who I was. I was just having this experience. I didn't have any. I didn't have any sense of who I was leaving behind or anything. I was just so happy to be there. It was such a wonderful place. And um, but then I saw my children, and it was so terrible. It was like. I saw so clearly that if I didn't live, if I wasn't around, they would grow up without without unconditional love. They would grow up without love and they would not know it. They would not know what the problem was. They would and no one else would know either. No one would know that they were orphans because they would have family around them. But they wouldn't have anyone around them that was loving them or taking proper care of them or putting their needs first. Not anyone be doing he needed a community we all did we all did it's been incredibly painful and incredibly difficult to live these last 15 years in and around uh, our, our family but estranged from them and because it made no sense for one thing it made absolutely no sense you know there was never any answer about what I did to anyone no answer at all about what I did to anyone to ever deserve it. All of them would say that they loved my children and that they were there for them. That all this time they've been there for them. But it's a lie. It is a complete and total lie. Only a narcissist would think, oh, yeah, this person's there for me. They're not, they're not there for my mother. They treated my mother like crap. My mother's not allowed to come over or be around the, this whole situation, but they're there for me, so that's good. You know, no, my, my sons did not think that way. They didn't want to be around, they didn't consider anyone family, or they didn't feel good about their family if their family wasn't nice to me. And that wasn't my doing. And it, it, it's the thing I would hear, I would hear, oh, you turned the kids against us, or you, you were trying to say, that's ridiculous. A, I would never do that because I love my kids more than I ever didn't, you know, more than I ever had any thoughts about anybody else. I would never do that. I would never have cheated my kids out of anything just because I didn't have it. Never. It was just ignorant on their part to think that that that's how kids could think that they that they could think that. But see, I, I you can see that they would because they're so disloyal. You know, they were also disloyal and also narcissistic every man for himself, that they could do that, that they could, that they could go ahead and, ha you know, have a relationship with someone who's hurting someone that they supposedly love and be fine with it. You know, that was the thing that didn't make any sense. It was like, um, if someone is attacking me and stealing from me and lying about me and, you know, doing all sorts to me, you can't hang around with them and act like they're a good guy and without without saying something to me about you know you know that's just you just can't do it and and how my children understood that and yet these all the rest of the family is trying to pretend they don't understand it is just ridiculous and then there was also this whole other group of people like the person that just sent me this card this person was a friend of mine that I had known since I was about four years old. And um, I was the maid of honor at her wedding. She was the bridesmaid at my wedding. Um, she and I were close, close friends for over 30 years. The way that I was raised, it was not so much lying as it was being and it was an act of love, it was an act of being a, a good family person, was to see the best in your family members and not say anything um, to other people about them, not, 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 talk, not air your family's dirty linen in public. And so the fact that I wouldn't confide in my friends about my husband um, was really because, A, I, was, I think I was ashamed of the things that he was doing. I was ashamed of the way that he was treating me and B, I was scared to death because I didn't want to lose my marriage. And, um, and C, I was loyal. I was super loyal to him. And I didn't want anyone to look down on him And because I was sure that it was going to work out. I was sure that we weren't going to break up. And I didn't want anyone thinking bad about him.
So, you know, there was all that going on. But that's not, you know, that's not why anybody walked out of my life. Whatever they said it was, if it was about drugs, it was bogus. Because anyone knows that if they really did think that I had a drug problem, that would be the last thing you would do. I mean, no one who ha knows anything about recovery would say, okay, this person's um, got an addiction issue. What we should all do is abandon them. You know, no one would ever do that. Not if they wanted them to get better. And if your concern was the kids, they all abandoned the kids too. It wasn't like, it wasn't like they had any relationship with the kids. You would have to be pretty ignorant to have done that. And, you know, there were people involved with this that were in a had been in AA for 20 years. So I can't imagine that... Um, that they really believed that that was the thing to do. If they believed this was a, that, that, that the whole issue was about drug addictions, that that would be the thing to do to help to affect any kind of positive change. Um, so, so there was something else going on, and um, you know, it, it, and, and I don't believe it was one thing. I believe it was something different for every single person that did it. You know, that that was very damaging. The fact that my own family had had taken his side. Um, and, and the fact that no one knew how sick they were was because I was loyal and I, well, first of all, I didn't, I didn't have any idea that they were that sick. I didn't, I had always told myself, and you'll hear me repeat this over and over again, that the, that the, the lie that I had always told myself was, I know that they, that, they, that they have a hard time showing me they love me, I know they don't say it, and I know that it can be pretty hard to see it, but I'm sure that if push comes to shove and I ever really need them, they'll be there for me. Now, this was the thing that I told myself that kept me hanging on for all, for year, decades of neglect, decades of neglect and mistreatment. Um, that one lie is what kept me hanging in there. I didn't talk about that because, you know, I didn't know. I mean, these are, you know, these are things you don't really so much know consciously. It was all, this, this family was all I knew. And then I moved right into... A husband that you know just kind of continued on that abuse and, and so you know I didn't know and for a person who is motivated by the thing that they care the very most about is being loved loving and being loved and I loved these people I loved all of these people to realize that they didn't love me back that that it wasn't a mutual thing that they did to me Something I never would have done to them in a million years. It did never occur to me that they would do it to me. And and you know I was right, I was right here, um, where I could be asked a question. I could be you know at any point, um, I could I could have you know answered a question, answered a call, and and I did have I did have. Some friends that did do that. And I have not one person, there's not one person that made a call and said, hey, what's going on? What, 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 you know, he said this and that, and are you okay? And there was a one person that made that call to ask me that, that walked out. Not one person. The ones that walked out didn't want to know. They didn't want to ask. So there, you know, there, it was something going on with them. But with my own family, they were just, they, um, they were narcissistic parents. They were never wanting to put like a child's needs before their own or anything like that. And they had um, a paranoia or a, a fear that, it's so ironic, they had this fear that somehow I was going to expose them, that I was going to make them look bad or something, which is so ironic because I spent my whole life making them look good and, and protecting them. And the only one that, that ever it did made anybody look bad was them doing a smear campaign against me um, after I'd spent my life, you know, protecting them. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, too, is I didn't have anything really bad to say, you know? Whatever it was that, that um, and, and they had, they had so, it was so sad because they had so little faith in me and so little faith in, in our family that they, that, they were able to, that, he, that my ex-husband was able to convince them, just without any work at all, that I was going to trash the whole thing, that I, you know, that I had no loyalty, 
that I had, you know. And they believed it. And so they trashed me first. That was their thing. They wanted to trash me first. And, you know, um, you know, it's just really, really sad. And, and I, I, so I, you know, I, my, I know exactly what, what my, um, what my ex did. I know that he basically, um, all he had to do was, um, the information that he fed to my parents, um, was information that he got from me our like our very first date and it had it and it was like t he'd been harboring it for like 10 years and and what that was was that um when I very first moved up to up to Washington from California I couldn't remember anything I couldn't remember my childhood and I asked my mother if she could help me because I didn't understand why I didn't remember anything and she got really Paranoid. She got like a, she had this reaction that really sh surprised me, and she acted like she was being accused from my childhood. And I asked my mother about it, and she like flipped out. And um, none of us wanted to deal with any of this, so I stuffed it all down, and I never mentioned it again. Ever mentioned it again? He brought that up ten years later, and because I was going through all this depression and stuff, it had everything to do with the fact that he was abusing me. It had everything to do with that, but he told my parents that I was having flashbacks and that I was, um, you know, that I was talking about my childhood and terrible things happened in my childhood and that that was why I was depressed and that um, I was saying all these crazy things that happened in my childhood, which none of it was true, but that was all it took for my parents to be, to just completely, um, you know, want to discredit me, want to distance themselves from me. And want to basically fight for their lives. It was like their they felt like their own their survival depended on, um, you know, destroying me. And um, and what they didn't see is that they were being completely played and manipulated. Um, you know, he he strung them along, and got them to basically do all kinds of things that proved that they were that they didn't love me, proved that they were trying to benefit from my divorce, proved that they um, were were willing to um, steal from me, willing to lie about me, willing to, you know, that they didn't value the family, they didn't value me, they didn't value my sons, and, um, and that they were going to do all that, and then they were going to turn around and say that it was me who abandoned them. That's that's what they were going to do. Well, he saw all that, and it, what they don't see is that he benefited. He got everything. He used them to distract everybody while he robbed me blind, while he, you know, got everything that he wanted. They got nothing but a destroyed family. And and now they can't even be mad at him about it because they can't admit they made a mistake. You know, so it's it's really it's really twisted. They can't even see that they are manipulated. They can't even admit that they were manipulated because they're narcissists. So they can't have made a mistake. They have to be right. So they will go down. They will. They have let their family be destroyed. You know, just just for that. Because all this time for the last ten years, I have said. I would meet with them, even after all this stuff they did, I would meet with them as long as we had, a, a, I would meet with them with the counselor, as long as, and they could pick the counselor anytime they wanted. And my mother said, we don't trust counselors, and that was it. And that, that was it. You know, so I lost, I've lost my family before. I lost my parents before. I lost my brother before, my sister-in-law before. I lost, I lost, basically lost my niece and nephew as tragic as this because it led to this and that none of those people understood how important they were that 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 none of those people there's so many people so many people that could have made a difference if any one of them had had come out and and been a role model had been protective of one of those people that was in my kids' life that I put there, had I had I had purposefully put there. Failed. Failed them. And 
and why? You know, why? You know, um, and and you know, so it's so petty, and you know, keep failing them. You know, keep trying to dredge up some reason. You know, some like phony reason to be to to be judgmental and to be you know angry at me or you know think that you know act like act like we've done something. You know, my sons and I had never done anything to any any one of those people except for um, love them and and um, and and care about them and there was just there was just such a lack of compassion there just, there just wasn't enough love and you know um, we can talk about you know there's a collective misunderstanding about what love is and a lot of people will say oh I love I love them people are loveless people people that do loveless things and would say that they love it, loved them my parents did things that would have been impossible to do if you loved me um, and so, you know, I have this, this saying that it, is, it has become really important in my, in my programs and in my to get through everything. And it's called embracing reality. And embracing reality is really important. And it can be um, blinding and it can be brutal. But in the end, it's the only thing that can save you. And, uh, and in a family like this, in a situation like this, there is a lot of lies that people are telling themselves so that they can they can feel okay about it. There's a lot of lies that people are telling other people so that they can look look like they're okay. Um, and so, you know, it's time to embrace reality. Uh, I have certainly had to and and um, you know, it's time that we all do. It's time that we all do because there's a kid dead now that <laughs> didn't have to be, you know, and there's 15 years of estrangement and destroyed families and destroyed, you know, unhappy child. When I survived that near-death experience, they were not happy about it, and that is a brutal, that is a brutal realization. When you have struggled your way back to life and you realize that you're in a room with three people that are happy about it, and three people that are not. The three people that are happy about it were my grandparents and my father-in-law. The three people that were not were my husband and my parents. And I knew it. It was all over their faces. The, the ones that were happy about it were crying and hugging me and telling me they loved me. The ones that were standing at a distance, not shedding a tear, there was something really wrong about that. I can't imagine. My son's gone now. I can't imagine. I would give anything to have him back. I can't. As a mother, I, you know, and, 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 and being a mother and going through these experiences has been, the, has been the way that I have come to realize how wrong it all was. You know, I've lost my son. If I had been standing there outside the room as he was being resuscitated and he came back to life, oh, my God, oh, my God. The reaction that my parents had was such a gross underreaction. There was not a phone call, not a bouquet of flowers, not a visitor. They didn't. It, this was not like I've been, you know, a few years, a couple years before. I've been in the hospital for one day having a baby. The whole room was full of people. The whole, the you know, the the house was full of you know visitors and food. Not one single soul took a day off from work, brought over any food, did anything. It was like no one wanted anybody to know about this. That, that I had almost died, they don't want anybody to know. It was like they were blaming me for it. And I do think that 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 that, that is what they told people, is that some, even though there was no, that even though they knew what happened, or at least my husband did, and my, my mother certainly could have found out. She was a nurse, for heaven's sakes, it was all in my records. This was, you know, there was, if you, you know, I think it was implying there was drugs related to that, and that's just completely ridiculous. So, from the very beginning, um, I think that there was, you know, a lot of, a lot of mischaracterization. But the one thing that is very clear is that there was not enough love and not enough compassion and empathy, or everything would have been a whole lot different. And that didn't stop. That didn't go away. And it is 15 years later. And really. 
can we all be that surprised?